What's going on, Ambitious Vet? Thanks for diving into the trenches with us this week as we seek to provide you the golden grenades to get yourself out of your own way, but also fuel your desire to make an impact post-military. This is your podcast built by veterans for veterans as we dive into the trenches with today's top subject matter experts, share inspiring transition stories, and provide masterclasses to equip you to reach your full potential. Bottom line is, this is your place to go after immediate transitional education expires. In seven, and I made a million dollars in my first two weeks. Right. Of course not. I lost five grand, um, which was a lot of money to me back then. And that was like a tipping point where um, I was like, is this a scam? Is this all just a big sham? Or and just quit and go back and try to find a better paying job? Or should I, you know, look into it more? And thankfully, you know, because I had a finance degree. Want to dive deeper into the trenches with other like-minded veterans looking to improve in the trenches of life every day? If so, check out one of our one or both of our free social groups, either LinkedIn or Facebook or both, like I said, and they're called the Ambitious Vet Network, which has been around since 2016. I know I, know I said 2017 last week, Ambitious Vet, but I went back and looked at the, the origin date of both groups, and they've been around since 2016. That doesn't mean anything, but hell, we've been doing it for a while, right? But more importantly, there you're going to be able to connect, learn from, and grow with uh, veterans who aspire to make an impact post-military just like you. Both the links to both those social groups will be in the show notes below, but also you're going to get access to updates uh, for the upcoming community learning platform that we're going to provide live masterclasses inside of, a private social network, coursework, um, and so much more coming soon. We're super excited to kind of roll that out in the coming months, but the next step is go from listening and being a spectator of this brand to going and engaging inside the trenches of life with other ambitious vets just like you. I hope to see you introducing yourself real soon. It's time to get into the trenches, dig, dig into your purpose, and fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast. Starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We are right back inside the trenches this week with Greg Patapinko. Greg is a Canadian Armed Forces Warrant Officer Reservist who bootstrapped a seven-figure agency and seven-figure e-commerce brand, if I can talk, with his award-winning agency, H Hour Inc., a performance marketing agency which focuses on e-commerce and lead generation, specializing in Google and Facebook advertising. Ambitious Vet, we're super excited to have Greg on the show. Greg, are you there, brother? Hey, Chris. Uh, thanks uh, for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I've uh, been listening to your show for quite some time, and uh, I'm really impressed with the community that you're building uh, with your show. Yeah, I mean, it's an honor to kind of get that feedback because sometimes you do this thing for a while, right? You do things consistently over time, and you don't, you don't always hear the birds chirping back, back to you. So it's cool to kind of have someone of your caliber, man, that has been able to, you know, while balancing military life, building a, a, a two, you know, joining the two comma club of click funnels and, uh, you know, making time to listen to this, this little show here, man. So just know that, you know, the respect goes back and it's always good to hear the feedback. You hear that ambitious vet feedback is key, but, uh, yeah, Greg, dive more into your background, man. Tell us more about you and, uh, what the ambitious vet, uh, network, um, should know about you. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, um, for those who haven't heard about me, which is probably most of you, um, um, I live in Toronto, Canada. I uh, came here uh, in a very young age as an immigrant and um, went through the typical immigrant struggle where, you know, my parents weren't sure where the next, uh, you know, paycheck would come from and working all the, you know, low, uh, low wage entry level jobs, security, uh, warehousing, assembly line. 
Um, I had to assume the breadwinner uh, role for the family at the age of uh, 17 for, for a brief period of time when my father got sick. Um, so, you know, that uh, kind of equipped me with the uh, initial strive to, to do well. And when the opportunity came to join the Canadian military uh, in the reserves, uh, I took it and joined when I was 18, joined the infantry. Uh, and um, I have been in the reserves ever since. So that's 22 years this summer. Um, while I was in, uh, I managed to you know, finish uh, a finance degree in university. And I spent about uh, seven years working um, in the uh, what's effectively the equivalent of uh, Wall Street in Canada, which is Bay Street here in Toronto. So um, that was, um, that was fun. But uh, eventually, um, I was about to start a family in 2007. And even though I was working a a cushy job at the time, uh, still, um, Toronto is not a cheap city to live in. And I was, you know, calculating my earnings together with my civvy paycheck and my reserve pay and still it wouldn't be enough uh, in my opinion to provide so um, I started thinking back and I remember that in the 90s when I came over uh, to Toronto um, I didn't have a lot of friends but uh, you know I got a computer uh, thankfully you know I had enough to get a computer and an internet connection so um, I taught myself how to make web pages in wow. like 98. 99 and uh, i've created a few uh, web pages that sort of went viral at the time uh, i couldn't monetize them very well but i met some interesting people so i had like a, an active forum and uh, people were like you know doing all kinds of um, things on the forum and one fellow taught me um about uh, how he was making money placing little banner ads on uh, websites and um, we did it for about six months together in about 99 98 uh, I actually made a few grand uh, when I was in high school, uh, just basically early ages of affiliate marketing uh, online. So 10 years later, in 2007, I remembered, well, I, you know, I know how to make web pages. Maybe I can, I can make some money on the side. And I started looking um, online for different uh, make money online things. Everything looked scammy to me, but a couple of friends of mine, um, they were basically all of a sudden flashing money and like buying BMWs. And I kind of asked them what they were doing and they just mentioned affiliate marketing. Um, and it, was really, real, it was real, it was real flexing, right? It wasn't like the guys and gals renting cars and showing off their big mansions that they were renting. It was, it was the real deal, right? Well, yeah, it was, it was a real deal because uh, like it wasn't, you know, somebody, with an Instagram video in a rented mansion and uh, <laughs> you know, what I'm of, you know about. yeah, it was like, you know, people I knew that uh, we were just like, you know, drinking in the park a few years prior. And now all of a sudden they're like really uh, starting to flash That's some cool. wealth. That's cool. And basically that was the early days of, of online marketing. Um, so I went uh, recon, we call it recce in, uh, in the Commonwealth. Basically I found the forum, uh, which, uh, a friend of mine was hanging out on. I found him by his uh, internet handle. And there was an affiliate marketing forum where it started by the gentleman uh, in the UK who used to be an investment maker, which, by the way, I was trying to become city mm-hmm. side. Um, and they were generating financial leads uh, for British uh, lenders in 2007, and they were getting paid for every lead that they generated. So um, I figured, well, I know how to make websites. Um, I just need to figure out how to learn, you know, how, how to drive traffic. And at the time, it was uh, Google, Google PPC AdWords, uh, search ads. That was the primary method uh, of generating traffic. That was before Facebook, before YouTube, before Instagram. There was none of that stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Thankfully, the f- people on the forum, they were really supportive of each other, and they would actually teach each other tricks and say, hey, read this book. Um, this is what I'm doing. This is working for me. And uh, really that abundance mindset, if you will. Mm. And uh, I taught myself how to, you know, or so I thought, how to run uh, traffic on Google. And I built my first quote unquote lead generation funnel using my skills from the 90s. The site still uh, looked like it was built in the 90s, uh, but um, mm. it, it was good enough to get started. And I started uh, advertising in the fall of 2007 and I made a million dollars in my first two weeks. Right. 
Of course not. I lost five grand, um, which was a lot of money to me back then. And that was like a tipping point where um, I was like, is this a scam? Is this all just a big sham? Or and just quit and go back and try to find a better paying job? Or should I, you know, look into it more? And thankfully, you know, because I had a finance degree, uh, I was a little bit of a data geek. I was kind of, uh, it was fun for me to pour over spreadsheets and build models. So mm. um, I looked over the data one more time and I found some pockets of profitability and I figured, well, if I just try focusing on those little pockets and ignore everything else, maybe it will work. And it did. And I actually started turning profits and then I made a million dollars. No, of course not because it was 2008 and it was a financial crisis and the whole system collapsed and instead of paying 125 dollars per lead uh, i went down to 25 uh, ah. you know what i mean so um but no, was a, before before you you know yeah, yeah. You dive into the the next like uphill battle ambitious and this is important right like you get into you see these people showing off big checks you know um you know houses nice cars stuff like that you know it takes work to get there right it's just it's just because you surround yourself and put yourself in the private forums there's a lot of work that needs to be put into it and also motivation right which we'll get to a little bit later but um you know one thing that you said you know overcoming the first hurdle is i think a lot of ambitious vets greg get into that mindset of like well what should I do? I made a few grand, but like, is this it? Or should I go to a job? Should I get do both? Should I balance? Um, but you kept going, you kept going. So tell us what made the difference as you went up to this next hurdle, as you balanced finance to affiliate marketing and, uh, and, and, and learned, you know, failed your way forward in other words. Yeah. So it was an interesting time because like it was, um, I was trying to, fight several battles on several fronts at once like i still wasn't sure what is the way forward for me so like picture this i was just um I basically got kicked out of the infantry battle school where i was the full-time instructor for a year uh, for you know something that i've done which i'm not very proud of uh thankfully i didn't get court martial but it, it came close to it and I, I think i learned my lesson so i came out of it and went into like a finest job um then uh kind of migrated towards uh, more like project management but i still was studying finance i was studying for a cfa exam which is one of the toughest financial certifications in the world with only a 30 percent pass rate i wrote the exam nine times there's three levels and i failed <laughs> twice before proceeding to the next level wow. um so i was doing that i was working a cv job i was uh um uh still active in the reserves i just got promoted to sergeant which is i think like uh, equivalent of uh, e6 in uh, in uh, the u.s system um so i was doing that the teaching courses and um then i started my little business on the side and had some difficulties there um so still trying to get into investment banking going through interviews with these like firms on, on the street and meeting like vice presidents and directors so i had a lot of irons in the fire Mm. Um, and really, uh, it came down to, uh, one day I was, I was flying from Peru to San Francisco on my company's dime. And I was rereading the book by Tim Ferriss called uh, the four hour work week. I'm sure a lot of you listeners are familiar with it. I was reading it for the second time. And there was this chapter that says basically like you're going to subconsciously, um, find reasons to put off important decisions in your life. Like, oh, let me wait till this bonus. Let me wait till this trip. Let me wait. And yeah. there and then I pulled out my laptop. There was no in-flight Wi-Fi. And I typed up my resignation letter. And when we landed, uh, I got to the airport. I got on the Wi-Fi and sent it off. My boss wasn't very happy, but I had to do it. In oh, retrospect, wow. that was a bit of a dick move, uh, quitting like that. But um, <laughs> I knew that if I were to come back to the office, who knows how long they would have dragged out. I mean, basically made a decision. Um, to pursue the marketing uh, full time um, at that time. So, what was that like? Right, whenever you decided to do that, what was that? What was that like? Whenever you you know decided to go, had the aha <laughs> moment with the Four Hour Work Week book, which is by Tim Ferriss, ambitious. That great book. We'll have that link in the show notes below. Um, but what was that? What was that like for you? Um. Actually, I think I jumped a little bit ahead of myself. So to answer your question, uh, yeah. like there's a lot of uh, advice, uh, kind of like the burn the boats, uh, no turning back, 
zero options mentality. And um, I think it, it's great advice for some people. For me, it was always like, I have this, you know, I've gained lodgement here and I'm holding my ground and I'm trying to build something else until it kind of surpasses what I've got going over here and then I can jump over. Mm. So that's, that's kind of what happened because like I had all of those things going on and eventually uh, my business took off to a point where I was making really good money. Mm. Um, and then I finally gathered enough courage to drop some of the other things that I was doing and pursue that. So yeah. it, it basically took, uh, took uh, building up confidence on the side gradually and getting the revenue, making sure that, okay, it's not a one-time flash in the pan thing. Like I can actually do it consistently for several you know, consecutive months. And in fact, it turned out to be almost three years actually, <laughs> but um, um, yeah, it, it was basically doing enough reps to persuade myself that this is the real thing. It wasn't like, Oh my God, I made a bunch of money and I'm just going to quit everything and jump into it, which works great for some people. Like I've met a few people, that's what they've done, worked beautifully for them. Um, for me, it was always the more cautious approach. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, also being cautious though, you can be more, you can also be more risk mitigating, right? Um, which is, can be, can be somewhat good as well. But man, I mean, I love that. I love that story, right? I love the aha moment being in a book, deciding to go, you know, all in and, um, you know, it's not easy. And I love the idea of just, you know, ambitious fit, you know, just building your confidence on the side and try and understanding what the, that metric looks like for you, and what confidence looks like, you know, for Greg, you know, good money that, you know, enough money to provide for his family or enough answering the question of enough, maybe different for him for, than you. Maybe that's your confidence. Um, next tier of your ladder, I guess, uh, metaphorically speaking, right? But you've got to understand what is enough for you. You've got to understand, hey, if you're titter tottering back and forth, you have a lot of irons in the fire. Also, to Greg's point, you've got to figure out how to prioritize, you know, what, what, what matters to you? What, what, what do you value? What is, what has the traction based on what you think is enough, right? And learning how to tie all those, uh, tie all those together. And it seems like Greg, you know, got to a point where he was understanding that made made some good money but now i'm excited greg for you to kind of dive more into the process of building a seven figure agency man because you went full time how long did it take you to get there and then what was the process of being able to do that yeah sure that's a great question and uh, i'd love to kind of break it down step by step and uh, yeah like I said, so it took about three years from that, like I lost $5,000 to where I'm now making my annual salary in like two, three months time, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, you know, basically high six figures uh, for a part-time business, um, for a solo operator. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. And, you know, um, so the key is making that first um lodgement you know that first success and then scaling it uh, for me like, the, the big uh, kind of aha moment was again rolling back time was it was uh, when i launched the campaign um and i was walking from my office to my armory for duty after a quick workout and i had a blackberry uh, pearl at the time and i have it uh, i got an email a lead came in and it was uh it was 25 British pounds, and that was at the time 50 Canadian dollars, which was coincidentally the same amount of money I was about to make spending the entire night um, operating with my unit. And that kind of like turned on a switch, like just one single lead, I can make it as much as I would make an entire like half day of work with the military. Oh my God, what if I got two leads? <laughs> yeah. What if I got yeah. three? So so I think that that's the, the first step is that proof of concept where you can actually get that first dollar in the door and then being able to repeat it but you know in general if, how to build a seven figure agency uh, you got to acquire a skill set right so for me that skill set was uh, building funnels or slash websites at the time that can convert visitors into uh, results in that case leads or later on there was uh, app installs uh, software downloads purchases uh, something uh, like that and um, harnessing uh, traffic. So for me, that was paid traffic, primarily paid search initially. Then of course we started doing other things, 
for some people it may be you know organic marketing social media email maybe their TikTok or whatever um, but yeah as long as you can acquire a skill set that can produce results for someone um, then you can go and and uh, sell that skill to someone and the big um, difference for me was that from day one i was operating on what's called on performance what that means is that i get paid for results mm -hmm. i don't get paid a flat retainer um so that is more risky as you can see you can lose money but it also offers an unlimited upside it's almost like when i was studying finance it was the options right you can lose mm -hmm. the, the option but or you can really um get a lot it, it gets the buy-in more right from the consumer more buy-in you know um and I've leveraged that for some of our programs too, but I mean, it's like, you know, that model helps more buy-in, but it's low barrier, low barrier to entry at a high trust level too. Um, you know, is what, is what I found over here with, with me, but I mean, I, it, it may be different with marketing agency, paid traffic, you know, stuff like that, because I can tell people get nervous when they got to throw money in social media, mm -hmm. Google and stuff like that. And there's probably an emotional aspect to it as well. I'm sure. Yeah, well, I mean, there's definitely aspects of like reducing the risk for for the client. There's yeah. uh, shifting the risk uh, more to your side and uh, other things. But basically, yeah, like what it allows you to do also is to scale to seven figures with a relatively low mm. amount of resources. So like I had a very lean team. We were just um, you know few few people. Initially, it was just me, and I was already doing six figures. And then to you know I could add just a couple more people, and. Um, because we're working on performance, it was also a handful of clients. I didn't have a huge book of business of, you know, um, you need you need 200 clients paying you five grand to, you know, get a million dollars, whereas I could do it with one or two and we would run big budgets for them and get a percentage of the results we generated for them. That way um, you can get to seven figures relatively quickly. Um, yeah. So that, that, that was my kind of way of doing it is uh, working on performance uh, with select a few clients with a small lean team and really, uh, you know, big scale worldwide campaigns, uh, a lot of traffic, a lot of volume, and then basically getting a cut of that volume. Um, and another big thing mostly paid on the back end of things, right? Um, and that I, I love that too, man, because it shows the confidence in what you guys are able to do. Like you guys have a lot of confidence and had a lot of confidence as you were guys were steamrolling mm -hmm. to the seven figure benchmark to Tom to comma club. Yeah. So, um, again, the, 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 so what out of that is that like what helped was, you know, using an unconventional model at the time, uh, performance versus retainer. And also, um, specializing like we ended up you know specializing over the years and and uh first it was financial lead generation then i kind of pivoted into apps when apps were mm -hmm. uh, just becoming a thing like for a few years we were just mobile apps from performance and did really well with that and then later on we were servicing uh software clients uh for desktop software so i basically carved myself a niche where i was a specialist and i kind of knew all the big players uh and uh, just worked exclusively with them and did well. Um, the Another big thing is networking. So I know there's different methods of building business. You can have uh, you know, advertising, funnels, uh, referrals. For me, it was just uh, primarily built through networking. Uh, so I was uh, going to conferences, trade shows, meeting people, shaking hands, and uh, kind of getting business that way. Um, in retrospect, so specialization is great you want to be the go-to person in an industry or niche uh, and you know i've i had people reach out to me uh, in that industry you know looking for for more leads or more volume but in the end what happened is um that industry that i was deeply entrenched in um it actually ceased to exist um last year because of a policy change and uh, what i failed to do is diversify um outside of that industry on the agency side. So um, that's kind of the, the flip side of, of building a performance business with just a few select clients where you can definitely make a lot of money very quickly, but it's also very easy to lose like 80% of your revenue if just one or two of those clients leave or somehow cease to exist. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what happened. My diversification strategy was actually different because it leads me to the next point and mm -hmm. here where uh, the 
e-commerce brand. So when you, mean, you know. so you, when you mean diversification, right? Just for a listener and for my own sake too, are you meaning diversification into different markets with what you were doing, um, getting out of different market segments, like you know, new customers to market to? Like, what do you mean by diversification? Yeah, I, I guess what I should have done if I. Uh, if I uh, was diversifying the agency business properly is, you know, I've, I've established a foothold in that one industry that I was servicing and it really scaled up, but yeah. um, there probably should have been time spent trying to carve into another industry, right? There and just go. basically yeah. what I chose instead though, is I, I saw that e-commerce was starting to boom in around, you know, 2016, 2017. And, I felt like uh, I needed to be in there. So I started basically experimenting with e-commerce and build a brand. So it almost kind of um, became a second business where, you know, I kind of stabilized the agency side and was running uh, the consistent pace. And I was pouring all of my attention into building an e-commerce brand. And um, I kind of built a whole nother angle to the, to the company. That's cool. Yeah. And you saw the opportunity inside of the industry too, Ambitious Fat. So you've got to make sure, Ambitious Fat, as you're going through this stuff, as you go all in and you're trying to build, for example, a seven-figure agency, you've got to make sure you're staying connected to the trends, mm -hmm. right? To uh, Greg's point, you've got to make sure that you're you're keeping up with those and learning to adapt. I mean, if he wasn't keeping um, you know, connected to the trends, he would have never been able to see the e-comp opportunity to kind of expand inside of. So, yeah, so now you've expanded into e-com. Um, I know you're going to move on to a next point after networking. What's that point? Um, well, the big thing is uh, teams, right? Like yep. anything that's uh, going to be a large enough goal, uh, you cannot probably accomplish by yourself. And even though I was a single you know, operator um, in the first few years, eventually um, I started hiring, outsourcing, delegating, and you know, over the years, I've tried different things and definitely made a lot of mistakes as a leader and a business owner. Uh, I've tried the fully remote model. I, I've tried the model where everybody is in an office, uh, hybrid model. Then um, when COVID hit, it was all remote again. Um, but yeah, definitely um, learning how to let go and delegate and relinquish control. Um, that was That was a big shift uh, from going from like a sole proprietor mm. to quote unquote ceo right um, yeah so um which is a totally different mindset totally different mindset right and uh you know what you know it's just like for me an ambitious step put yourself in your own situation whatever role you're in for me you know being a sales guy by trade getting out of the marine corps <laughs> all i thought about was like going and selling people <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's yeah. all I did is build out a sales process, try to get people in the funnel and sell them and close them. Right. So mm -hmm. show them the deal, close it. And, you know, to, you know, morph into a CEO mindset, it's not just always closing deals. I mean, you've got to build out strategies. You've got to give out, you know, build out processes and systems from a COO hat. You know, there's a lot of stuff that comes into a business. And, um, you know, if you're not able to be able to balance a lot of hats, you know, it's, it, it could be, it could be a tough idea to kind of go in, go from a solopreneur. And if you want to be a solopreneur, great. It just means that, you know, you're going to, you know, maybe just stick in that lane. But if you're really trying to build an actual organization and company, you're going to have to learn how to either raise money quickly so you can hire people or, um, you know, learn how to balance a lot of hats um, and learn a lot of different skills and go through the learning curve of learning those different skills that you may not naturally be gifted at. And you've got to, you've got to go through it and uh, hopefully you, uh, you endure it to the end. Cause we need more, more ambitious, effective entrepreneurs out there. But yeah, I mean, Greg, I mean, tell me more about, you know, what you learned from the process, right? Man, going to a seven figure agency, like, what did you learn about it? And if you were to go back, you know, because obviously sitting up there in a two comma club with Russell, uh, Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels, I mean, that has to be an amazing feeling. But now, you know, you're there now. Now you're rebuilding um, from where you're at now. Where would you go back and change um, now sitting now back on getting to that two comma club? Yeah, by the way, the, the award was uh, for the e-commerce uh 
funnel, by the way. So it wasn't for for the agency work. It was okay, for yeah. for actually a physical product. But um, I mean, with with the agency, uh, like especially now when like almost anyone can start an agency after watching a couple of courses and just start helping people. Um, I think the big thing is you know first of all becoming good at what uh, what you're uh, what you're doing because if you cannot produce the results you're not going to get uh, any repeat business you're not going to get any referrals and uh, you know if, especially working on performance you're not going to make any money um, so constant learning um, is, is key um, and I, I still believe networking uh, you know is is going to be big um, because yeah, you can have a funnel. You can run ads to it. Uh, maybe you'll get some clients through it. But especially initially, when you're starting out, you need that someone to believe in you and give you that business. And that, to me, was always done through personal interactions. You know, it doesn't have to be face to face. It could be just striking up a conversation on Messenger with someone and really right. building a rapport with them. But having those people skills, uh, I think it's it's uh, it's big. And uh, another thing is, um, you know, picking an industry. So in retrospect, like I've had like several waves of success where it was always a certain industry where I took a deep dive and I learned everything there is uh, to learn about that industry so I can understand its unique um, pain points and, you know, intricacies of working in it. And then uh, you can come to somebody in that industry and say, hey, I know how to generate results in for you because I've done it for so and so and so and so and they all know each other right especially mm-hmm. in small, small industry so uh, being a generalist when you're fairly small I think that's not the best approach uh, especially right now like you gotta you gotta be um, a specialist in a certain industry in a certain area and then from there you can grow you can become the quote unquote full stack agency um, and another thing is um, I'm just learning it right now is um, you don't have to do everything yourself as in there are people who have your audience, your potential clientele already in their pockets, so to speak, uh, but they're not your competitor. So, you know, um, for instance, I'm kind of collaborating with this web design agency that builds really good Shopify stores. And I send a lot of uh, business their way just because we don't have the in-house capability to build Shopify stores in my business, but these guys do amazing work. They've done work for me. They've done work for my clients. So anybody I meet that says, Hey, I really wish I had a good store. or I'm thinking about updating my antiquated store to a new one. I'm like, Hey, go to talk to these guys. Mm-hmm. And in return, um, they will similarly uh, refer business back to you. So like who has your customers, already and what how can you collaborate with them uh, in a win-win scenario where you know um you don't have to generate clients yourself i think that's that's a better way to do it kind of opens the 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 hose a little bit more right of more water to trickle into the the funnel right yeah it's like it's what they say about like the abundance mindset and instead of like it's a dog eat dog world it's actually not it shouldn't it shouldn't have to be right and there's enough uh, business to go around if you collaborate with the right folks and there's what i learned is there's no shortage of people who who are willing to help especially like if, if you're struggling or just starting out there's a ton of people who just want to uh, give back and uh, and help yeah yeah so I love that. I love that. An ambitious vet. I know you're taking away from what you need to be taking away from that, but also always be looking for channel partners, always looking for people that can complement your value added services, right? Um, find someone that can provide what you don't have it be value added and provide it inside the marketplace. Now I'm not, I'm no e-com um, or paid advertising expert, So I never even try to be, but, um, you know, good business acumen is good business acumen. And if you are even a corporate employee that's, you know, a leader, mid-level manager, executive, right? If you're inside the trenches and you're leading campaigns, projects, stuff like that, find out vendors that may be able to be value adds, that may be able to create more opportunities for your initiatives inside your, your, your corporate 
position and your role and your strategic objectives, right? This philosophy can be repurposed all around. I love, and I love how you broke that down. Man. Yeah. Even your competitors can become your allies. Like, you yeah. know, tr true, true story. Like uh, in one of my e-com brands, I am uh, reselling my main competitor's product mm -hmm. under my own brand and they're cool with it. And everybody's winning because uh, they, they penetrated one part of the market, but they didn't penetrate the part of the market I was in. So I said, hey, just put, put your stuff in my store and this will no way compete with what you already have going. It will only add to your bottom line. They're like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's do it. So yeah, um, yeah that's that's beautiful, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people need to be doing it more, right? A lot of people have their pride and ego in, in place. So it's just cool to, you know, me included, you included. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. we all have that, but it's just like, it's we need to be doing that more. Maybe We need to be open more especially veterans doing business with veterans, collaborating more like this, um, just to help help people kind of leverage their platforms, their opportunities, their resources and networks to kind of just, you know, kind of speed up, mm -hmm. you know, speed up the, the time frame to the next milestone that that veteran's trying to, uh, or civilian, you know, is trying to hit next. So um, is there anything else that you have around just how to, what you learned from building a seven figure agency, right? Before we dive into just one last golden grenade uh, and then send an ambitious vet your way. Um, sure, maybe, yeah. way maybe interested in the performance-based agency or e-commerce business that you're doing. Yeah, so actually I wanted to switch gears for a moment and talk yeah. about the the e-commerce side of, of yep. things. And that's uh, like, you know, I accidentally built a seven figure uh, brand uh, on Shopify. And there was also okay. like, the way I've done it is a little bit backwards. And that was, you know, at the time it was taught in a lot of kind of, you know, quote unquote thought leaders of e-commerce where you just, you know, test a bunch of stuff and kind of see what works. And mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty capital intensive and effort intensive. Um, but I, I managed to, you know, through that process, find a couple of uh, things that sold well. And then I improved uh, on that and scaled it up and of course the skills from the agency side like being able to generate traffic uh, and convert it into sales that was super helpful but there were a whole other slew of things into uh, what goes into building a, a brand that consumers like and uh, pass around and um, basically you know doing it now you would want to pick a, a market pick a customer avatar that you want to serve and then you know find out as much as you can about them, what kind of desires, what kind of pains they got, and then what where the current products or services fall short, and see if you can actually, uh, you know, fill that gap, solve that problem, and fill that void with your your offer, and learn how to make really good offers because that's another thing. Like a lot of what I found out, a lot of um, especially in the physical goods uh, world it's been sold as a commodity, like, you know, competing on price and, you know, not really um, having an irresistible offer, which is, mm -hmm. you know, there's a few cool, cool tactics where you can, you can do it, offering bonuses and combining things together and bundling things together and adding features. And it's, it's, it's exciting. Uh, but basically yeah, listening, listening to the customer is big, you know, seeing like what they, they uh, want uh, and what they need fixed. And, um, as long as you can master at least one paid traffic channel and you can establish relationships with influencers and uh, by influencers, I don't mean like YouTubers only. It could be people of influence, people who have an audience. Like we had uh, one of the biggest industry print magazines organically find, find a product that we're selling, uh, buy it, test it, and then run an editorial. Uh, full page right that's wow. that's amazing right like that's that's yeah. the kind of stuff that you want to um, create not by accident but actually like you know go out reach out to people who have your audience and you know create relationships goes back to what i was saying about networking and see if they can help you know spread the word about your product you know, mm -hmm. and um, publish publish about it like tv radio print we were we were in all of them at one point in time just because we realized oh wait uh you it's not just facebook ads right it's not just google ads well, there's this whole ecosystem of people that can help uh talk about your product and pass the word around and create content for it and and everything so 
Um, yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. I mean, I never, you know, when we first talked, I thought you built that seven figure e um company, man. I thought you built that based on just you going out and doing paid, paid traffic. But it's cool to also think about like, what, what other mm -hmm. vendors can you partner with? How can you gain, you know, a flow, you know, kind of open up the, the garden hose a little bit more, the hole a little bit bigger so the water flows out a little bit more by having another partner that has the same target audience yeah. as you. And that's cool too, man, because that's more organic in my opinion. I mean, I'm not the expert on, you know, paid traffic or marketing. I'm not going to try to be, but I feel like as a, as a business development standpoint, you know, that just opens up the garden hose for organic growth as well on top of the paid traffic. Yeah. And it just, you know, that's, that's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. That's a great strategy. Yeah. Really paid, paid ads were a big part of it, but uh, I think like the organic plus the social proof, that's mm -hmm. uh, that's a crucial part of, of any campaign, especially nowadays because consumers are more educated and, they do a lot more, uh, you know, background research, and they want to see who else is talking. And a lot of them make decisions based on what their closest circle of friends and trusted advisors think, versus an advertisement that they see or maybe like mainstream media is saying. So that's why it's important to 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 do both. Like as you grow, when you when you're just starting out, you gotta have like one one product, one audience, one one channel to kind of gain that initial lodgement. And then once you do it, then you can start you know, building um, everything else out and become quote unquote omnipresent. Yeah, yeah, no, that's important. That's super important. One by one, ambitious vet. So um, yeah, Greg, I mean, what would be one last golden grenade that you want to provide to an ambitious vet that's listening to this show right now that may just not be satisfied you know, I know that you were saying offline here that you just got off a, a great conversation with a veteran that's trying to get into e-com, you know, but, you know, kind of lacked, lacks the motivation, right? What would you give to someone that's trying to establish itself in an e-commerce business or, you know, want to learn from you? What would you, what would be some words of advice for you from you? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And like, like we were chatting as, uh, you know, if someone has just been bummed out from, maybe last couple of years of lockdowns and just being cut off from the outside world, or maybe they're facing some difficulties or simply feel disconnected um, from, from something bigger than themselves. I think everybody in the military, they, they need to be uh, sensing that they're part of something bigger than themselves. And when they lose that, um, it has a void that needs to be filled. So because I'm still, serving as a reservist i kind of still have that connection but i also can relate with that kind of seeking that higher sense of purpose once maybe you know the initial safety uh, needs are met like you have a roof over your head you have food on the table you have um, clothes to wear and then people start losing motivation so the fella i was coaching is uh, is a canadian armed forces veteran quit uh, about a year ago started his own apparel business actually doing well uh, you know, like five figures a month in sales and growing. Things are seemingly going well, but he's uh, he's unmotivated. He's kind of bummed out. And if people find themselves in that situation where, you know, um, they, they feel that. What has been working for me lately is a few things. So first of all, is not uh, working proactively on not being alone and being disconnected. That could mean going to events, joining associations, uh, being around like-minded people who are motivated, um, who are moving forward. So like, you know, not people who just like, you know, drink beer and bitch and complain about the good old days and how, no, you don't want to be around those people uh, unless, unless it lifts you up. But essentially, yeah, like join, join entrepreneurial uh, groups, organizations. Um, and uh, another big thing is giving back. So even the fellow that I was coaching, he says that what's been giving him a little bit of joy lately is helping his friend uh, starting her own little uh, Shopify store. So he's, he's only a year ahead of her, but he's already helping her mm. and it's working and it feels really great. And I can relate. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a mentor on a, as a Canadian nonprofit for veteran entrepreneurs where I'm coaching uh, people uh, who are um, starting in their business. And even yesterday, we had a, an hour and a half long session, which is like six uh, entrepreneurs who are just about to start, paired up with six uh, mentors, and in ten minutes, try to give them tips on how to how to 
execute their idea or take it to the next level. You know what? I felt great after it was done because what comes easy to me, what's my common knowledge to me, for them, it was like mind blowing. And just being able to give back and be useful again, be part of something bigger. Like, I think that's a huge void that needs to be filled in uh, a lot of veterans' lives. And that's one way of doing it. Yeah, no, that's great, man. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. And I, I love the point too of just joining something around other leaders that are up to stuff in life, not the beer drinking clubs or something like that. What, who's up to stuff in life that's actively seeking on new challenges or bigger problems to solve, bigger challenges that, uh, you know, we all like to go after as ambitious veterans, right? So like making sure that you're getting around those people, there's a time and a place for hanging out with people that just want to drink or maybe watch some Netflix. I mean, Mm -hmm. hell, I still have those social groups too, man. There's a time and place for that. But if you're trying to, uh, you know, if you're really trying to, you know, reach to the next level and hit those ambitious uh, and next ambitions, ambitious vet, it's a tongue twister, um, you know, make sure you're getting around people, associations, networking events that people are up to stuff that are bigger than them. And I think that that's when you're going to start sparking that internal motivation as Greg was, you know, obviously so brilliantly saying more than me, but, uh, you know, I want to kind of switch gears. I know we're wrapping up here, Greg, but where can an ambitious vet that's listening to this right now, learn more about you and, uh, connect, connect with what you're up to in life, man. Sure. Yeah. So if you just want to learn about me personally, and um, I think the best uh, way is uh, social media. So you can find me on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook using my first and last uh, Greg Potopenko um, or um, Instagram. Uh, the handle is H hour 48. Um, if you want to connect professionally, um, one of two ways. So if you want to work with me, um, with my agency, if you have a business uh, that needs help with paid advertising, uh, consulting about you know your your e-commerce business, the funnels, conversions, anything like that, uh, the corporate um, website is h-hourhour.biz. Uh, obviously, you know people who have been in the military will understand what it means. It kind of yeah. you know gives me that nod yeah. often at, at events and. Um, I also have a coaching group for uh, veteran entrepreneurs or, you know, want to be entrepreneurs who are thinking about going into digital marketing or e-commerce specifically. So I have a free group where I have a bunch of uh, content I've recorded uh, talking about the fundamentals of how I built my businesses and just more of what we're talking today on the podcast. And uh, for that, you can go uh, to enlisted to entrepreneur.com uh, to as a numeral, numeral or I think I, I bought two domains. So if you just write and list it to entrepreneur, we'll direct it to the right place. Basically, yeah, it's a free Facebook group and uh, you can join and there's uh, hundreds of other uh, and like-minded individuals that you can network with and uh, collaborate with. Yeah, it's important. That is important. Well, uh, Ambitious Vet, make sure to go check out everything that Greg's doing, uh, doing some amazing work. Um, you know, he's met with our 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 internal team, one of our advisors and, uh, you know, just incredible stuff and just helping the ambitious vet networks messaging get tighter, more clearer. And I didn't know how discompobulated our message was, um, you know, before even spending an hour with Greg a couple weeks ago with, uh, you know, a couple of our core team members. So, uh, you know, he's legit, he's the real deal. And he really, really, really is committed to people just growing, obviously, but also getting results with their products and services and helping them get more deals, right? So that's super important. And if you're just trying to get around, you know, people that are like-minded and wanting to grow and you resonate with anything that Greg said on this conversation, make sure to go check out that uh, free group. It's free. Um, The only cost is your work ethic. You got to get into that group and work and add value. That's how you start building your connections. Enlisted to entrepreneur.com. All those links will be in the show notes below. Greg, man, hey, thanks for joining the show. Uh, Man, I think this is the first time we've actually had a Canadian Armed Forces, um, you know, Armed Forces member on this show, man. So you're you're famous in in, in this show right now. So uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate what you're up to. And uh, yeah, man, this thanks for joining the show. Oh, thanks for having me. And if you want more Canucks on the show, I'm more than willing to make some interest to some you know, pretty pretty badass people there. Come on, I might hold you to that, brother. I might hold right you to that. 
The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to vettrainingcoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. Ambitious Vet, before you go, make sure you go check out one or both of our free social groups on LinkedIn or Facebook. All you got to do is go to the search engine on both of those social media sites, hit the Ambitious Vet, or type in the Ambitious Vet Network, and you'll be well on your way to connecting with other like-minded veterans just like you, looking to improve in the trenches of everyday life. Hope to see you there, and make sure once you go and you, you're added and you're welcomed inside the tribe to introduce yourself and get key conversations moving forward so you can be executing that next mission in your life today.